Hi everyone! Today I'm going to review one of the public physics lectures I attended, How to Be a Better Cook, The Physics of Food. This topic caught my interest because I love to cook. My default TV channel is the Food Network, and my favorite show is Good Eats, hosted by Alton Brown. Alton's show focuses on the science behind food and cooking, so this lecture just narrowed the topic a bit to only physics. The lecture focused on phase transformation techniques such as crystallization, supercooling, and glass formation. We also looked at atypical types of solids such as foams, colloidal gels, and polymer gels. Our speaker, Bill Yosis, was the former White House head sh pastry chef. He then did several demonstrations regarding these topics, my favorite of which was tempering chocolate and forming it into the shape of a cylinder. The process of tempering chocolate involves formation of beta-5 crystals in particular because these crystals give the correct taste, look, and snap of amazing chocolate. To form these crystals, the cocoa butter, which is the source of fat in chocolate, will crystallize into one of six forms. So, to avoid melting beta-5 crystals while melting the other ones you don't want, you have to heat the chocolate to right below 94 degrees. Its melting point is slightly higher than the other five crystalline forms. Once you reach this point, the chocolate must be cooled rapidly to around 79 degrees. Mr. Yosis performed this by scooping out most of the chocolate onto the cool surface of the table and stirring it back and forth with the spatula. Once cooled, it was mixed back in with our warm chocolate reserve placed on a sheet of hard plastic which was curled into a cylinder and left to harden. This chart shows all six crystals that form in chocolate. Our target crystal is number five. You can see each melting point and the qualities of chocolate that are produced from each type of crystal. So what's the difference between the six forms of beta crystals in chocolate? They're all made up of the same molecules, but their spatial arrangements are different. What actually happens during the tempering process on a microscopic level? Let's see. I found a great resource illustrating the tempering process on chocolatealchemy.com, which I'm going to explain to you here. First, a legend for the types of crystals we will see, along with a melted chocolate symbol, which looks like a chocolate sprinkle. The author did not include crystal 6, as we aim to get the majority of crystal 5, so we're going to ignore it for now. So, when cocoa butter is initially melted, we get a big group of all five polymorphs. So let's go step by step to see how this happens. We start with the untempered chocolate and heat it to 63 degrees Fahrenheit. Type 1 has melted. By 73.9 degrees, type 2 has melted as well. This goes on until only type 5 is left. At this point, we start to cool down our chocolate. Type 5 seed crystals are the only ones left to have not melted. The crystallization starts and type 5 crystals begin to link together, forming a crystalline lattice. Now, the chocolate has fully hardened and is in its most stable and tempered form. I hope you've learned something new from this video today, and here is a list of the sources I used for information and pictures. Thanks everyone!